Hey everybody, uh, it's the weekend and I'm basically messing around with the, the cars a little bit. Uh, doing some minor upgrades and some maintenance and stuff like that on them and I've got something planned I wanted to do for this uh, to address one of the more common problems with the Traxxas 4x4s. And I'm talking about the 10th scale cars like the Rally, uh, the Slash, the Stampedes, the Telluride, uh, all suffer from uh, the, a similar problem. And what it is is the, the probably the most common problem that I see, and it's a simple problem, uh, that happens to these cars is centered around the bearing back here in the back of the car, right at the bulkhead, uh, where the slipper clutch assembly and the spur gear uh, fit into the center drive line uh, and mounts right there so the motor can, can connect to it. That bearing will seize and fail commonly, especially in the brushless cars. I've seen it numerous times in the brush, brushless models. Uh, I don't, it may not be as big a problem with the, the brushed ones because they're not nearly as fast, but the pressures that the brushless systems seem to put on that bearing is, is pretty high. The bearing's not terribly large and it is a common failure point. It will actually freeze up and either melt a small bushing that it rides on, on the center shaft, or, uh, well, and actually it's a, it, in conjunction with, uh, it can seize to that. After it melts the bushing, it will freeze to it, and then it starts spinning inside of the bulkhead, and it can melt the bulkhead. Or the, the bearing will actually disintegrate and break completely apart, and then you've got a loose-fitting spur gear that is sounding horrible and stripping frequently, uh, and, and will strip your gear out. So Traxxas makes a minor upgrade kit for that uh, to help with that problem, and I thought it might be good just to tear into this. It's not as difficult as you'd think to replace that, to check it, and to upgrade to the new part. So I thought we'd do that really quick uh, while I was messing around with this car. Uh, so I'm gonna tear this apart and show you how to do it. All right then, so we've got our Stampede 4x4 here. This is our test subject for today. First step we wanna do is remove the tires. Uh, it just makes it easier to work on, well, the rear especially, uh, because we're going to be focusing more on the rear of the truck for this, this evening. Let's pop the body off. And I've got a little dish here that I like to use to contain the, the parts and clips and things, just so they don't go running off for us. Parts tend to have legs when they come off the truck. Uh, okay, body out of the way. Now, uh, remove the tires, seven millimeter wrench or a wheel wrench. I'm gonna remove the front also, just to make it easier. Okay, now that we have the tires out of the way, got our tool kit here on the workbench. What we have to do to get access to this, first of all, let's pop the gear cover off. And save the screw. All right, get the gear cover out of the way. All right, so to get access in here, where the bearing is and everything rides in there. We need to pull the rear assembly off the car. That's really, it, it looks like it'd be really difficult, but it's actually very easy. There are two screws, let me flip this over. There are two screws right here that you have, to, that one and that one, uh, that you have to undo. And then there are two underneath the truck here and here that you have to pull out. And those take a 2.5 millimeter bit. That's the same for a Stampede 4x4 or a Slash 4x4. Uh, let me clarify, non-LCG chassis. If you have an LCG chassis, 
Uh, I think it's a little bit different than this, but it's not too different. I mean, you can get pretty much a general idea from this video. They are a little different, but not totally. So remove these screws. These are a little bit bigger screws. I have to tighten the clutch a little bit. And put the screws in the dish. Flip it over. Pull these two screws out. And see if we can get to there. There we go. Okay, and now, now that you've got those, all those screws out, those four screws, this back end will just pop off the car. You just kind of wiggle it a little bit, and it should pop right out, just like that. Now in this case, it's actually trying to take the spur gear with it, which doesn't really bother me. There we go. Back end off of the car. Now, this is just going to drop right out now. Well, I think so. There we go. Your... Uh, spur gear assembly will come right out of the car. So now all that's left is basically the bulkhead here and we got that out. Now we're going to be working on this mostly. Now one of the big, the, the common issue with this uh, car, I'm talking about Stampede and, and Slash 4 before, this bearing right here that rides in that center bulkhead right in there this bearing will actually seize up frequently. I've seen lots and lots of problems with this bearing uh, in these cars. What it does is it will seize up on this little plastic. We pop this off. Okay, now let's move that up. There's a little plastic bushing right here that this rides on. That little bushing right there. And when this bearing seizes up, it'll actually melt this plastic bushing. And that's a common problem. Once it melts that, now, you know, you've got some slop and play in there. And you start stripping your spur gears out. Uh, and it goes actually further. Lots of issues with this. And this bearing actually will fail frequently. I don't know what it is. I think it's because it's right by the motor. It's got a lot of pressure on it. It's a 10 by 15 bearing. So the bearings inside are not really very big. And it's moving at such high speeds with so much pressure being right here on it uh, with the spur gear assembly and the slipper clutch assembly that they will seize up commonly. Now this one's not bad, but I'm just, I'm doing preventative maintenance on it uh, because we can upgrade this. We're going to put a better setup here uh, to help keep this from happening. Um, so that's what we're doing. But be that as it may, this will seize to this. After this melts, I've seen, I've seen all kinds of problems with this. Uh, once this plastic bushing here melts, we get uh, this sticks to it and the seized bearing will actually freeze right to that. It'll seize to that and then it starts spinning the bearing actually inside this bulkhead. And what it'll then do is melt around this bulkhead here and your bearing will move in the plastic because it heats up and melts and then you're, you know, it doesn't fit right, it's stripping bearings. If you've had that uh, problem, you're gonna have to change this bulkhead assembly also, uh, FYI. If it looks melted in here at all, uh, it's, you're gonna have to replace this or you're gonna have constant problems. And this isn't too difficult to replace. It's a couple of screws, you gotta pull the motor out, you know, and that's, that's really about it. There's three screws to it and you know, move your motor mount screw to the new one, pop the new one in, and you're good to go. It's pretty easy to replace. Mine is not bad. We're just replacing it ahead of time just because we want to. Now, the part I'm replacing it with is part number 6893X. And it comes with a bearing and an aluminum. You can see that blue anodized aluminum bushing. That is going to hold up a whole lot better to the abuse that this can take 
but you still have to keep a close eye on this bearing. I do like to take this apart frequently and just check and make sure that that has not seized up and is not having problems. So you might want to, you know, open your car up and, and do that frequently. To replace this, we're going to install this onto here. And to do that, you need a, let's see, two millimeter to remove this set screw. Yeah, it's a two mil. You need a two millimeter Allen wrench and you're gonna pop this set screw loose on this spline shaft. This is what engages the center drive shaft. Slide that off. There's a little flat spot. It's pretty self-explanatory. Then we're gonna take, this is an eight mil plug wrench. This is an eight millimeter nut. And remove Grip the assembly tightly and just remove that nut. And that was on, I mean, it compressed that spring. This is your clutch adjustment nut. So if you're slipping, if your slipper clutch is slipping, it's because this nut's too loose. And we're gonna set it aside, pull the spring off, heavy duty spring, set it aside, and then slide off the, the bushing. That's the stock plastic bushing. Definitely not as good as this setup here. Now again, I still recommend taking this apart every once in a while. I mean, not every week, but you know, frequently enough that you can check that bearing and make sure you don't have any problems because it, it is a common failure point on these slash or, you know, Traxxas 4x4s. Now, we are going to slide, I don't know if you can see this or not, but it is, it is kind of tapered to one end. Notice how it's tapered here on your right side. Uh, that tapered end goes towards the spur gear, okay? So we're going to install it just like that. So that tapered end, slides on towards the spur. See that? Right down towards that spur gear. Now we're gonna slip the spring back on, put the nut back on, and tighten it back down. Now you can lock this down, but then you're not gonna have very good slipper function. Uh, I usually go to snug and then maybe back, you know, a half a turn. Uh, it seems to work pretty good. Uh, th these pads are still pretty new. Now, you can use this bearing that they give you. But, I, you know, I tend to have bad luck with Traxxas bearings freezing up fast. So, I'm going to actually put a, a different brand. I like to use Avid bearings. We're going to save those bearings because they're good. I mean, we'll put them back in the wheels or something. But for this bearing... I want, I want good, you know, top quality, and I've always had good luck with Avid bearings. Uh, you know, not that they, I mean, they don't send me any money or anything. I'm just, I've, I've had very good luck with their bearing. Now we're going to slide this all the way back on. This is the splined adapter here. Slide it back on and tighten it back down. Okay, this seems to be the trickier part of is putting this thing back together. Now I've got the bearing on our bushing here, on the assembly, and I'm just, you gotta kinda just work it into place. It just, you know, it takes some wiggling around. It, it has to engage the drive shaft just right, the center shaft, and you just, you kinda have to just work it into place. There we go, just like that. Uh, and we're ready to put the rear assembly back on. And again, this is, you got to kind of, there's a flat spot here, uh, actually two flat spots on this uh, shaft. And it has to engage the uh, pinion gear in the rear diff housing just, just right. So you kind of have to, again, wiggle it into place. Sometimes you've got to turn your differential uh, to make sure that it's going to engage. Sometimes you got to twist your your um, spur gear just to make sure that's seated right. Then, and I did this again. I, I always seem to do this. 
it doesn't quite engage here. I gotta pull it back off. And just wiggle it in so that it, if it will. There we go. There we go. Snap. Nice. Done. So it takes some work to get that together. I mean, it's it's a little it's a little weird. You got to kind of wiggle everything. Sometimes it helps to rotate stuff, but that feels and looks pretty good. Nice and nice and done. Okay, so let's put that aside. Throw the bearings in our tray. Now we got to re-screw this back together. So we're going to take our four screws. These are all the same size on the back end. So no worries on what where they came out of. They're all the same thing. And run it back together. Done. Not bad, not bad at all. Diff feels good, turns easy. All right, done, there we go. Uh, oh, wait a minute, I wanna put this gear cover back on. I like running a clear gear cover. I'm just weird that way, so I picked up one of those as well. We're gonna slap that back on. Perfect. All right, well that's all there is to it. Uh, got everything back together, uh, ready to go. Ready to slap the tires on, put the body back on, and we are ready to run. Uh, it's time to go get it dirty again. Uh, anyway, I hope you found this video helpful, and uh, thanks for watching. We'll see y'all next time.